The fundamental theorem of calculus can be summarized crudely as an integral undoes differentiation. We can use this to help us determine or understand the origin of some common integrals such as the integral of 1 times dx. To evaluate this we try to find the function that when differentiated gives 1. This is of course x, but because adding any constant would also give 1 when differentiated, we add a constant of integration called c. This could have any value including 0 without changing the result. All indefinite integrals have a constant of integration like this. Another integral you will encounter frequently is the integral of a constant alpha times x raised to some power n times dx. Because differentiation lowers the power by 1 and multiplies the result by the original power, integration must raise the power by 1 and divide by the new power because integration undoes differentiation. This integral is therefore x raised to the n plus 1 power divided by the new power n plus 1 and then multiplied by the original constant alpha. Of course, we need to add the constant of integration as well. This is valid for any value of n including negative values and non-integer values except for n equals minus 1. As an example, consider the integral of 5x squared times dx. Using the previous rule, this integral is equal to 5 thirds x cubed plus the constant of integration. If the value of n is negative 1, as in the integral of 1 over x dx, the result is the natural log of x plus a constant because the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. The integral of e raised to the power alpha times x, where alpha is some constant, is 1 over that constant times the original function plus the constant of integration. Note that alpha can be any number, including negative 1, which means this allows you to evaluate the integral of e to the minus x. The integral of the natural log of a constant alpha times x times dx is x times the natural log of the constant times x minus x plus the constant of integration. This looks complicated, but you can confirm that the derivative of this result gives the integrand of the integral. The integral of sine of a constant times x is negative 1 over the constant times cosine of the constant times x plus the constant of integration. The integral of cosine of a constant times x is 1 over the constant times sine of the constant times x plus the constant of integration. You can look up online many other indefinite integrals. And yes, you can even find printed tables of integrals, the most common being in the CRC Handbook of Chemistry and Physics, which is widely available wherever you find a high concentration of chemists. Despite the availability of these tables, it is often worth committing common integrals to memory to make routine work faster. The integrals we have already discussed are a good starting place. Keep in mind that tables of integrals will not contain all possible integrals you may encounter. To evaluate integrals not found in these tables, you can reduce them to simpler forms using a variety of well-known integration methods such as substitution, integration by parts, partial fractions, or trig substitution among others. You can also use a piece of software such as Mathematica or MATLAB. The integrals that are not found in tables but that are easiest to reduce to simpler forms are integrals of a sum of functions. To do this, we use the fact that integration is linear, which means the following. When integrating a sum of two functions such as a constant times f of x plus a constant times g of x, the integral can be distributed to each term to obtain the integral of c1 f of x dx plus the integral of c2 g of x dx. Any constant can also be factored out in front of the integral to obtain c1 times the integral of f of x dx plus c2 times the integral of g of x dx. This is what it means to say that integration is linear. The integral of a sum of functions is the sum of the integral of each function and constants can be factored out of the integral. For example, the integral of 5x squared plus sine x is not an integral we have seen, but we can break it into two integrals we have seen because integration is linear. This gives 5 times the integral of x squared dx plus the integral of sine x dx. Using rules we have already learned, we obtain 5 thirds x cubed minus cosine x plus a constant of integration. Even though each integral has a constant of integration, they can be added into one constant of integration. As another example, consider the integral of pi times cosine 5x plus 7 e to the minus 2x. Again, this is not an integral we have seen, but we can distribute the integral and factor out the constants to obtain pi times the integral of cosine 5x plus 7 times the integral of e to the minus 2x. We have rules to evaluate both of these integrals. Using them, we obtain pi over 5 times sine 5x minus 7 halves e to the minus 2x plus a constant of integration. Again, we have combined both constants of integration into one constant. The fact that integration is linear allows us to transform more complicated integrals into a set of simpler integrals, making integration possible using simpler rules. 
One technique for reducing an integral to a simpler form is called substitution, and it can be illustrated with the integral of cosine squared theta times sine theta d theta. This integral is not listed in any of the tables discussed previously, but we can reduce it to a form that we know how to integrate by defining the variable x to be equal to cosine theta. Taking the derivative of x with respect to theta gives negative sine theta. Solving for dx gives negative sine theta d theta. Taking the negative sign to the other side just for fun produces negative dx equal to sine theta d theta. We can substitute the variable x for cosine theta and negative dx for sine theta d theta. And this allows us to write the integral as the integral of x squared dx with a negative sign in front. This is an integral we know how to evaluate even without a table. This integral is negative one third x cubed plus a constant of integration. Substituting cosine theta back in for x gives negative one third cosine theta cubed plus a constant. Substitution reduces an integral to a simpler form, allowing it to be evaluated from memory or using tables of integrals. Another example is the integral of x times e to the minus x squared dx. This indefinite integral is not in any of the tables of integrals previously mentioned, but we can reduce it to a familiar form by defining the variable beta to be equal to x squared. The derivative of beta with respect to x is 2x. Solving for d beta gives 2x dx. Dividing both sides by two gives one half d beta equal to x dx. By substituting these quantities into the original integral, we obtain the integral of e to the minus beta d beta with a one half out front. This is an integral we can evaluate easily as negative one half e to the minus beta plus a constant of integration. Substituting x squared back in for beta gives negative one half e to the minus x squared plus the constant of integration. Substitution can work well when one part of the integrand is the derivative of another portion, like was the case here. Even when this is true, however, some trial and error may be required to figure out if substitution is appropriate. Another method of integration that helps reduce integrals to simpler forms is integration by parts. In this technique, we visualize an integral as a product of some function, here we call it u of x, and the derivative of a different function, here we call it v prime of x. If an integral can be written this way, the result is the function u of x times the function v of x before it is differentiated, the integral of v prime if you like, minus the integral of the derivative of u of x times v of x. This can be derived by integrating the expression for the derivative of a product of functions, but we won't do that here. Instead, we'll look at an example to see how the result is applied. Consider the integral of x times e to the minus x. This indefinite integral is not in the table of integrals mentioned previously, but we can evaluate it using integration by parts. The first thing to notice is that e to the minus x is the derivative of negative e to the minus x. In the context of integration by parts, this means we can define v prime of x to be e to the minus x. This means that v of x is negative e to the minus x because the integral of e to the minus x is negative e to the minus x. The remaining portion of the integrand is just x, and so we define u of x to be x. Using these assignments, this integral can be written as the integral of u of x times v prime of x dx. This is exactly the form required for integration by parts. Using the definition of integration by parts, the integral of x e to the minus x dx is therefore minus x times e to the minus x, that's u of x times v of x, minus the integral of the derivative of u of x, which is one, times v of x, which is minus e to the minus x. Pulling the negative sign out in front of the second term, we obtain negative x e to the minus x plus the integral of e to the minus x. The integral in the second term is available in tables of integrals and probably in your memory, allowing us to write the result as minus x e to the minus x minus e to the minus x plus some constant of integration. Factoring out e to the minus x gives minus e to the minus x times the quantity one plus x. Now that you've seen an example, it is worth pointing out that the rule for integration by parts is usually stated in a more compact manner by defining u as the function u of x, du as the derivative of u of x times dx, v as the function v of x, and dv as the derivative of v of x times dx. Using these definitions, the rule for integration by parts becomes the integral of u dv equals u times v minus the integral of v times du. This is equivalent to the definition given in the box above, it's just more compact. Integration by parts can be challenging because it requires you to recognize part of the original integral as a derivative of another function. It takes practice. And that's evaluating indefinite integrals.